Welcome to the Spin Wiz Comic Show. Whoa. From Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us for exclusive interviews with the publishers, bringing you the newest titles in indie comics, web comics, movies, and more. No way. Way. And now, here's your host, Jeff Palumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It is Wednesday night. It is great to see everybody. Um, and by see, I mean, I, you, I, you see me, I really don't see you, but I really like all the fact that people are actually hanging out in the chat and already talking. That's cool. Uh, welcome. This is the spin Wiz comic show. I am always your host, Jeff Palumbo. I'm also the owner of spin Wiz comics, hence the name, the spin Wiz comic show, uh, where I interview just great people and great partners that are part of our site. Uh, a lot of this up and coming, uh, comic group that is not Marvel and DC cause they can suck it. And, um, Really, that's the best part of what I get to do. I get to meet all these cool people. And now most of the people I interview, I know. Um, like the gentleman tonight, the dude is a mu sick musician, and he does comics. And we got a chance to meet at C2E2, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, because, you know, RIP conventions, that's when we actually got to talk to people face to face. Um, but he has an amazing Kickstarter out right now. He also has content on spinwizcomics.com that I'll be linking throughout um, the show. So if there's questions, comments, concerns, queries, or other, all you gotta do is type them in the chat. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, well, just type them below. Uh, lots of details of where you can find out from the Kickstarter and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't know why, I mean, you didn't come to look at me. That's for damn sure. So um, ladies and gentlemen, my first and only guest tonight, I don't think I've ever had two guests. so but maybe someday. Um, he's a musician. He's a creator. He's crushing it in comics. Has a Kickstarter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John O'Diener to the show. Ooh, a cover-up. I like it. Oh, dude, that was dope. Yeah, I mean, very, uh, very show-like. Well, I'm on the call with you, and I was like, everything is delayed. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I should have told you there's a six second delay <laughs> between live and this, but now you also like the problem with using Zoom and using a broadcast software is you actually would need two physical webcams in order for you to see me live, like so we're actually talking. So for everybody that knows, he actually can't technically see me. We're t he is just hearing my voice and then having a six second delay on Facebook because that's <laughs> the way things have to happen in our severely awesome technological world. Um, Maybe we could just pretend that we both filmed our things separately and then just synced them up and we're pretending it's live. How weird would that be? And we just guessed everything right. That's what's really going on. <laughs> well, speaking of that, like we talked about briefly um, in our little boot up, uh, you know, Pink Floyd and Wizard of Oz. You got that kind of thing going. We'll get into that in a second. But just so everybody knows some background between us, we've only met once for maybe, what, 15 minutes? We kind of hung out a little bit. It wasn't anything too crazy. It was during C2E2. Um, Chicago Comic Con was the last really big con before... I mean, it was really when Corona was just starting. And people were worried they were going to get it. And uh, I, I remember hearing that at the event, although that did not stop everybody from drinking in Das Beer Garden, like it was <laughs> going out of style uh, or hanging out th that night. But it's great to see you again. You know, thank you so much for being a partner on the site. Uh, you really, right after that, you were just like, yeah, let's do this. And, and it's been awesome. So uh, you have some content on the site now that I'm going to link. And then we're going to get into your fancy Kickstarter that you're crushing. So right now, <laughs> we have Jetpack Zach and Monster Bounty on the site. Uh, both are which a great mo Monster Bounty has been on the homepage already. Jetpack will be up uh, here in the next week and a half, I think. I think I have Sweet. it calendared for a week and a half. So um, how long have you been writing comics and like where did you do it because obviously you're a new musician but when did you start writing or did they just you have you always done both of them uh so my like comics origin story is really strange so i grew up and i was obsessed with like the batman animated series uh spider-man i i was always like the car cartoon and action figure guy and then 
Spawn happened and my friend's older, cooler brother in the 90s was like, Metallica's cool. Spawn's cool. And he like showed us all the toys and we freaked out and we bought the comics and then the movie came out. And we we're like, this is the coolest thing. And I had this like comics break after that because I was like, no, I'm just a musician. I don't do this other stuff anymore. I had a garage sale where my mom was like, hey, maybe we should put all of your action figures in the sale and we'll just make them a dollar a piece. Like, you know, it's not like you're going to sell all of them. And an hour later, my neighbor showed up and was like, how many are these? 300? I'll take them all for my son. And I like sold my childhood in one moment. And then I was like, I'm a drummer now, <laughs> uh, which was the most bizarre thing. So, you know, fast forward, which fortunate, it was fortunate for me because I love music. And, uh, you know, the quick version was like out of high school, got in a van with my friends and my brother. Uh, we toured we ended up touring the whole world um we were on a bunch of different record labels and a bunch of wild stuff in 2015 we ended and during that trek um there were two weird kind of pinnacle moments for me the first one was we were in singapore and this is like the most name droppy story but it's the most bizarre thing and if you like know who i am like i'll eat raw veggie dogs out of the fridge like i'm a scumbag and <laughs> when cool things happen to me it's like the most larry david thing in the world so um we got off a plane landed in singapore and there's this guy sitting in uh like they're like waiting for like another flight or something and he recognized Haley from paramore and he walks over and he's like hey like sorry to i don't mean to be weird but you guys are paramore right and we got we were fortunately so my band was called the swellers and we got to just be the band that was like the little fish that would like latch onto a shark's back and like eat all the cool stuff that they would get uh that was kind of my band's career and so they're like oh yeah you know like we're a paramore we're just we're playing a show tonight and he's like do you want to go to the comic-con in singapore tonight and i've never been to a comic-con so my first one ever was in singapore which is the most bizarre thing and we were like technically a guest of marvel from it so and it turns out it was cb sabalski the dude who is like running marvel uh so that was a super bizarre moment. And I remember like looking at comics and being like, I am like worried about getting Taco Bell. So I don't know if I could like afford a bunch of comics right now. Cause like that was when the walking dead first started blowing up and stuff. And I remember like holding comics and being like, ah, I don't know. Cause I was so cheap back then. My thing was like, if I could get a burrito, I'd rather do that than, you know, spend anything on myself. <laughs> uh, and then I, so I almost got into comics then didn't fast forward a few years later. I was on my friend Aubrey Sitterson's wrestling podcast called straight shoot. And I got on there like last minute and he was like, Hey, you're into comics. Right. And I was like, I like comics, but I'm not like an enthusiast, I guess. And he was like, that's too bad anyway. And like the way he said it, like stung really bad. And I didn't know why it turns out that the other guest on the show with me was Jason Aaron, <laughs> who is like the God of comics. Uh, so I got to just talk wrestling with him for like an hour and it was the coolest thing. And then I read Southern Bastards later and I reached out to him and I was like, hey man, I didn't realize this was you. I was reading, this is like one of my first like newer comic series. Like that's cool. And I like made some wrestling inside jokes. He followed me back on Twitter and that kind of started this like people in comics were acknowledging me as someone that's not just music guy for once. And I was like, my bands ended. I had been I've been writing for um, a bunch of like I've been doing journalism stuff for a long time. So while I was in a band, I was writing for like Vice, Alternative Press, some other places. And I was just sick of doing, you know, reporting about other people's lives. And I wanted to create worlds like I did when I was a kid. Like that's why I played with action figures. I made my own stories. I did all this stuff. I based it off cartoons I loved. So uh, to end the long winded version, um, I just realized one day I was like, I want to write comics and I want to make it happen. So uh, I started listening to every single comics podcast I could, like Word Balloon, Off Panel, and started just digesting everything, reading as much as I could. I had my few like comics mentors give me a bunch of books. And then it all started with a comic uh, that ended up being called A Comic for Flint Hope. Um, I got five of my friends who were writers, five of my friends who were artists. And they were all people that were always like, man, I wish I could do a comic one day. Like all of us were always saying that. And then I finally went, this is during the Flint water crisis. Let's make it a charity thing. All of us are doing this for free for a good cause. 
And I'm going to work on getting advertising from local businesses to put in the comic so we could get that made and then have a show where our bands would play and then we would sell that. So it was this big, like, because I'm Mr. Like project management, like I put together this scheme, which ended up working to where uh, we ended up having, it was five full stories, full color and everything. And it was all of our first comic, like, and source point press ended up uh, through our friend L they reached out to them and were like, Hey, like we could help, we could do this. So we ended up getting national distribution and that was my first comic ever. Uh, so uh, technically I started writing in, it was like 2016 or 2017, something like that. Like when I was taking it seriously and not just like short stories for fun. Uh, but then since then I just caught the bug and I've been, I always say like doing the Jeff Lemire approach where I write as much as I can. And I have like 10 different series at all times. And if someone wants to pick up one of them, cool. And if not, I have it there for later. You know, I'll just pick and grab that. Like I'm never running out of content. So it's, it's, I've been interested in a very long time, but I've only been writing for about four or five years. That that's one of the craziest origin <laughs> stories I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's, that just blows my damn mind. It, it almost was like if, if you believe in the world and energy and stuff like that, like it kept trying to pull you back in and you're just like, nah, yeah. <laughs> and then it pull you back in and you're like, like so with somebody bigger and you're like, nah, and it finally, it's just like, Hey, get your ass in here. <laughs> like, we, we oh, need absolutely. you. I, I feel like my, my whole life has been like stumbling down a staircase and then there's like a treasure chest. I'm like, you know what? I could open this now. It's okay. You know, like I have to have one to have the other. I can't just have a good thing or whatever. Um, so yeah, comics have always been that for me where like my, my whole life I've been like a weirdo storyteller. I've always been in my own head. And the second I found this community, because my favorite part of music, I was always like our visual identity guy. So I would reach out to all the artists to do our concept album artwork. And I would write a lot of the lyrics for us. So I was writing stories this whole time. I was creating artwork. I was creating like, what color scheme is this album? Uh, what variant colors are we gonna have for the vinyl? And then when you open it up, what does it turn into? Uh, so the very last album we did as the Swellers, it was called The Light Under Clo Closed Doors. Uh, our friend Ben Sears, who is like, works for Koyama Press and does a bunch of amazing indie comic stuff. Um, he actually also did character designs for Midnight Gospel, which just is on Netflix now. Um, but at the time, he was just like a hardcore kid that did awesome band artwork, you know? So like, I, I've been like stumbling into these people over the years, and now all of us are kind of congregating in this community where we're like, you know what's easier than like packing a drum kit and like breaking our backs to load it into a trailer and driving 10 hours? Doing all of that with comics and lifting less stuff, but then, you know, <laughs> doing all of the other grunt work to go with it. That's amazing. Good Lord. I mean, I, I meet a lot of people and again, I never had that background. Um, it seems like you're, it seems like the creative musical background severely overlaps with comics for whatever reason. I hear it a lot um, because my background is in the gaming, the gaming world, uh, mm -hmm. video games. But you would think that where there's a visual, it would easily transcend into comics. Like you'd find a lot of the same people that do video games or, you know, design video games to, can do a comic and they don't. Where you find is artists and musicians writing and drawing comics. It's where you wouldn't think that would be it, but it's almost like a second creative outlet that is just as popular. Um, I mean, do you see, do you see that? Or am I just, maybe I'm just imagining cause I'm in multiple industries. I mean, you're definitely not imagining it. Like it's, it all kind of comes back to like the DIY mentality where, uh, you know, my, fortunately, like our parents invested in us when we were kids, you know, like I'm a little privileged white kid and, uh, they got us like a recording setup. Like it was like a little weird electronic mixer thing because that's what it was before every person had access to pro tools and laptops and stuff yeah and my brother and i would record on our basement so we recorded this like basement demo and then we started selling that and we're like oh that's fast like 
we, we could record this here and sell it here. And then we could play a show because we built a fan base because of this. Mm-hmm. Well, we need t-shirts to sell. We need that. And like, so all of it's about like the hustle, you know, you want to, you want to tell your story to like get like, it's filling this weird void. Like that's how I look at it, where my brain is just rapidly firing all day long. And when I get to harness and hone the chaos into something and like put it in a direction and finish that thing, that to me is the most important thing in life. I love making stuff. Um, so now every time I look at everything, you know, I think of it how I did when I was in bands, where I would go, all right, well, I want to do this album, but I want to do this, this, and this with it. Um, I want to make this comic, but I want to do this, this, and this with it. And like you, I, you know, my, my, I'm always like five steps ahead with everything. Like I, I'm also, you know, how you're in gaming and stuff like that. I was, I have a writing background, not in, you know, uh, fiction, but like in, uh, freelance journalism stuff. So everything I've ever done was like living paycheck to paycheck in one weird way or another, or having to work at like Starbucks or something like that while I was on tour in between that. So, you know, it's, it's all literally hustling all the time and throughout comic stuff. Like when I was, uh, working at AP, my friend, uh, Frank Barbier, who did a bunch of rad comics, he did stuff for image like DC. And he turns out that he was in a band that used to play with us in New Jersey back in the day. So without even knowing that at the time, I like saw a post on Twitter and was like, Hey, I'm looking for some press. Can anyone help? I immediately reached out. Hey, I work for alternative press. I'd love to cover this. I'll pitch it to him. And then he was like, by the way, dude, remember me? We used to play shows. I'm like, Oh my God, I had no idea that was you. This is crazy. So then I pitched it to them like, Hey, it's a music comics crossover. And then I got to do that with my friend, Matt minor. Cause he did a guar comic. I got to do it with Matt Rosenberg and I got to do it with these other people that are all like punk rock adjacent. Um, so when I met, Uh, I interviewed Patrick Kinlan, um, who was in the band Drug Church, who's super rad. And then he was talking about Matt Rosenberg a bunch. So then my first C2E2, I walked up to uh, Matt Rosenberg and I was like, hey, man, like I, you know, talked to Patrick recently. I wrote for AP, AP, but I was in this band. And he's like, did you stay in my house back in the day on tour? And I was like, I genuinely don't know if I did or not, man. Like, and he's like, I'm pretty sure you did because he used to put out uh punk rock records and i would tour with those bands so like all of us are it's like the like what like set five degrees of kevin bacon or whatever the hell it is yeah or seven degrees or whatever you know like it's it's that whole thing where almost everyone i came in contact with was like this weird creative that was like this is getting kind of weird i like this a lot and you know you could live in both like that's what i'm still doing i'm in technically three bands at least three bands. I don't even know the status of most of them because of the world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but like, but that's part of the fun. Like I like throwing a bunch of shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And if something sticks, I go with that for the time being, you know? Uh, but when it comes to the comics part, like even if it doesn't take off, I don't care. Like I'm not getting paid for any of this stuff. I love doing it. That's literally why I do it. And if I could eventually get paid, hell yeah, that's a bonus, you know? So it's been the weirdest ride, but I know that music and comics, just like professional wrestling, just like comedians. And, and, you know, I do have, so Frank, for example, that I was talking about earlier, he now writes video games. So he did the flip where a lot of comic folk are going into video games to write after the fact, or like artists are becoming animators or vice versa. So, you know, it's like this really cool, like constantly shifting thing. And they all go hand in hand because all of us are like, we have to meet deadlines. We have to create something from nothing. We have to be our own project managers. And we also have to make sure that we don't lose our minds in the process. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's this kinship that we all have. We just don't know how to explain it, but we're like, comics are cool, right? And then we all get to be friends. That's in Like, I thought I knew a lot of people. Nope. Not comparatively. <laughs> like, I just, holy shit. So, um... <laughs> Uh, Brett Fox saying that's a lot of similarities in how you and Trent Reznor both compartmentalize ideas, both musically and artistically. So you just got put in the same box as Trent Reznor. Like I always say, I am exactly like Trent Reznor. <laughs> I mean, 
you know, and you know that. Uh, so Brett Fox, for those people that are there, is uh, my stepson, also a musician, but also tried to write, had put together stories for his own comic. That's so awesome. He, like the, the kid is ultra bright, um, really good at everything, and again, very much like you. He's like I. He's like I just enjoy this. And if I can make money off it, great. But I just want to tell my story. And I'm just like, all right. And then my wife is also super musically inclined. Um, she will tell you she can't sing, but <laughs> she can literally name any musician from decades of like different bands and different groups. And she has met like just dozens and dozens and dozens, dozens of these people. And I'm like, little did I know that. I'm hanging out with all these people who know other people and I'm working hard trying to meet just one person. So I need to start <laughs> leveraging my community more, I think is what it comes down to. I mean, like, and I will compliment this. Like you just walked up to me point blank at C2E2 and you're like, Hey man, I heard about this comic, blah, blah. And like, and because I'm me, I was like, someone's talking to me. Sweet. <laughs> you know? And like, and we hit it off for a while and that's how you do it. Like my version of that is Twitter where like I've met some of my favorite bands by just being the guy who talks to people or comments on everything or like stuff. Like I'm not doing it to network. I just want to be friends with everyone, you know, mm -hmm. like, and to an extent that's like, it, it is a crutch, but it's also like, there's nothing cooler than like creative kinship in my opinion. Yeah. And like what you're doing with spin Whiz, you know, you're offering something that a helps, like comic writers and artists and people that don't have the opportunity to just show up and be, you know, like a massive big two person or whatever. Like you, you give them an outlet to go, Hey, do you want to do this digitally? All you do is send me the stuff. The end mm -hmm. that and the second you said that I was like, sure. You know, like I, I don't have any weird exclusive stuff because, you know, I'm also exiting music where I was like, contractually obligated with all this stuff or I'd have a merch deal with someone or I'd have whatever and like everything I did had like all these parameters to it and the way I look at comics is like I've already been a freelancer for everything else in my life so why not talk to anyone I can or release yeah. my stuff anywhere I can you know that's that's how you meet people and if if you weren't offering opportunities like that you know or just walking up to people and talking to them out of nowhere that stuff doesn't happen my right. version is I would be gone for 10 months out of the year and it would be like five bands on a tour with five people each and they all have crew members and they all have this other stuff and we didn't stay at hotels. So I would stay at a stranger's house every single night and I would do that 10 months out of the year for like wow. 10 years. And every time we stayed at someone's house, if we hit it off with them, we got a lifelong friend and my like Rolodex of people that I should remember their names and don't is insane. And it's not like a bragging point. It's just that's how my life ended up being. All I'm doing is constantly going different places and seeing different people and talking about stuff or whatever. So the second I'm exiting music, like, I mean, I'm in music, obviously, like I, I'm always posting about like my band No Trigger just recorded like a 20 song record and less than two weeks and all this wild stuff. Oh my um, gosh. But like, that's also in between me doing freelance writing for this big like plant-based site in Canada and helping launch a coffee company and launching the Kickstarter for the inevitables, which is like the latest thing, you know, like I I'm constantly doing stuff, but that's just how my brain works. Like it's the whole shark thing where it's like, if I stop swimming, I die, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and like, to me, like, that is that's fulfillment like meeting people talking to people building something and creating meaning because without that like my nightmare is sitting on a beach for the rest of my life doing nothing like that's not paradise to me my paradise is making stuff with people and collaborating and talking and doing cool stuff mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of my thing too i i i love video games and i've tried to play them and now my son's getting of age i play with my stepson which is great or at least we used to and now he's off doing his million things as well. Um, <laughs> and But what I can't do is what I find, which is very much of that same way, is somebody will come and say, or I'll go through a process. Like, say it's returning something. And I'm mm -hmm. like, this process sucks. I want to fix that process. I'm like, I can fix that process. And I'm like, here's how we would do it. Or, you know, I work for Lenovo full time. I'll see an operational inefficiency that to everybody else is fine, but because I'm coming in from the outside, it, you know, it might not be part of my necessarily department 
or I hear about it somewhere. I'm like, is that really happening? And I can't let it sit. Like, I just have to jump on it and be like, I can make this better. So Mm -hmm. I think it's different. Like you're actually creating cool things. I'm just creating a, a, a nicer, I don't know, monorail. I guess, you know, without bumps in it or, (laughs) yeah, I mean, a a nicer train track, like it just a smoother train track. The train's going to get there, but when I jump in, I try to smooth it out. So it's all nice and neat and you can have your tea without spilling it and stuff like that. But, but there's also like different definitions of that stuff too. So like, uh, and, and again, I, I've had a support system this whole time. So it's not this like magic, like I did music and everything worked out. It's like, if I didn't have like, you know, my fiance Ashley or my parents or like whatever, like, or, or just a network of friends and cool people I met along the way, you know, none of this stuff would be possible. And I think it is, uh, irresponsible to tell someone like, Hey, just quit everything. Just write comics or just do music because you can't do that now. You know, it's like in the nineties, like if you had a shot, cool. But like I started touring, right when like streaming music was hitting and no one was buying music anymore. And then the whole industry was changed and we had to go, how do we even sell records or make records or get people to come to our shows or do whatever. So, you know, every every industry is always adapting, but like you also have to remember that like your definition of success is a thing. So if, if making a thing or doing something makes you feel good or worth, who cares if it's cool? Like, I just, I have the unfortunate thing of like, I make myself have to always create things and bounce around. But with the like, I always call it like, because it's my baby, like I have the my baby syndrome where it's like, I have all this added guilt to every single thing I do. If I don't finish it, it's my baby and I screwed this up. Or I didn't, I could have done more and like, it'll be like 10 30 PM. And because I have really bad anxiety, I'll be like, I should be doing something. I hate that I'm tired right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, like that's like, I, I operate based on anxiety. Like it's not this like wonderful magic thing. So if I had the means of like, I have this stable thing I can do and I'm good at it, which, you know, you seem to be describing like that's rad. And then if you have things you like doing around that, hell yeah. Like, my job is writing for other people and doing like press releases now and stuff, you know, it's not this glamorous, like, yeah, (laughs) press releases, August 12th, 2020. So-and-so the company, you know, like, like, but my brain just like, it's like solving puzzles. Like that's, that's what it is for me. Um, but it's writing, you know, it's like if a lot of artists I know their dream is like, I want to be an artist full time and do all this rad stuff. And then they go, okay. Uh, I want you to do commissions, but it's only based on other stuff that people want and not you. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like everyone compromises to an extent. Yeah. But, but I feel like reminding yourself and stepping away going, I get to do this and not, I have to do this changes yeah. everything. Well, and that's where spin was comics came from is that my Kickstarter failed seven years ago and God bless my wife for just being like, okay, like you want to do this? Like, all right. It just was very, and she's always been supportive since then. And, but spin was comics in its current form and keep hustling every night to try to help, to create a site, to help people who are not Marvel and DC expand their user base and expand their fan base and their readership has been like a thing for me. Like it's, it's like you said, if I like, I'll take a break and sometimes at 1130, I don't want to work. I don't want to start work, but I have to start work. Because mm-hmm. I have certain things I have to get done because I have a full time job too, and uh, but if I had not failed, I wouldn't have found a gap that was there from somebody that was professional that could see the gap, and I'm like, well, screw it, I'm just gonna get rid of the gap. Mm-hmm. And now, granted, I wish I had more money and more people to help me to improve spin was quicker, but you know that's kind of stuff happens. That's that's what it is, and that's and, part and of that's that also, DIY. Yeah, exactly. Like it's. Uh, I, I heard a thing somewhere where they're talking about NASA and they don't call them failures. They call them like first attempts or something like that, mm-hmm. you know? And like, that's like so much of my life has been a flub and I've been like really close to this cool, massive thing. And then it was like, never mind. And like, <laughs> but you know, when you talk, it, it's a game of pong essentially. Uh, yeah. But like you, I, I talked to so many other people where like, 
I, I had a weird moment where one of my friends is in like a bigger band and they're like amphitheater size. Yeah. And uh, we went to go see them. And after the show, like the singer was pretty drunk and he like pulled me aside and he's like, man, like, you know, I just want to be with my kids. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, you sold out an amphitheater. What the hell is wrong with you? And he's like, I'm actually going back to school to get my engineer degree. So I'm just doing that online and stuff right now. And like trying to, you know, band stuff isn't going to put kids through college. You know what I mean? And here's me like grinding my ass off for years to hope that a few hundred people would give a shit, you know? Yeah. And like, and, and that's where it's rough where the grass is always greener everywhere you look. Yeah. So the way I look about it is like I, my last ba- like main band, the swellers, like, and the reason I bring it up is like that band burned me out so bad because I, I saw a wonderful trajectory and then reality and other obstacles just smashed it. And I had to totally change my brain chemistry. I had to be like, we were never as big as I thought. We were just like the accoutrement to other people. Um, I like using that word once a year. So it's that's super great. I'm gl- I mean, that's a, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. You saw it here. I'll just, I'll postmark it at uh, 31 minutes and 23 seconds. It's a, the brewski really brings it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fine wine I'm drinking. But anyway, like, you know, I was always like a part of other cooler things. But I had to, like, I had to have my own ego death to understand my own reality. So my, my like, and I know there's different versions of ego death, but my version for this story, um, I was at a part, so I live in a Flint, Michigan suburb. Like, we've, we were always a Flint, Michigan band. And I was at a Flint, Michigan house party. And we're hanging out. And this kid walks up to me and he's like, dude, I know you from somewhere. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's probably my band. And I'm like, oh, cool, where? And then he, like, stops and goes, you sold my stepdad a cowbell. And I was like, oh, it's from Guitar Center. And I was like, this isn't a cool thing. I'm just retail guy, you know? Yeah. And then, like, I was, like, Guitar Center, Starbucks, like, all normal jobs. And I had to, like, I'm living this weird thing because I had cool stuff happen when I was younger. And then I'm now adjusting to, you know, there's this not like a magic sum of money from my band pass because we were always broke the whole time. Um, so it's like I'm reliving my like late teens, 20s now-ish, you know, it's super bizarre. Like, so uh, I, I had to kind of relearn everything. And then that's why for me, like after having experienced all of that stuff and then dealing with like, dozens of people a day at all my other jobs and like seeing what the world is really like and not like this magic world where we just like dance around gas stations and get snacks and then go play a show and then drive 10 hours like that's why comics i have removed all expectations and you know i know there's a lot of people that are like not stoked on like random people coming in that may have a following or whatever and just like kind of scooping up all the stuff uh because there are people who've been studying comics and reading comics and writing comics since they were like 10 years old Mm -hmm. like uh one of my friends steve orlando i just listened to him on the word balloon podcast and he's talking about how like he was writing i think it was like 12 or 14 or something like that and he was just going like ham on like writing all the stuff and taking it to someone at a con and getting reviews every single year and kept doing it kept doing it and like pushed and pushed and pushed and then he got all the stuff because he worked super hard for it you know like whether you believe the 10,000 hour rule or not, it kind of happens. Like mine was yeah. drumming. I just was drumming since I was nine years old. And then I got to drum and do cool stuff. Um, so with comics, like I feel like this is like the cherry on top for everything else. Like this is like what makes me happy. Uh, I get to tell stories. I get to work with cool people and, you know, and do stuff like this. Like I love just getting the nerd out about how weird life is, but then going, but it's cool that we get to, live it together. You know what I mean? Yep. To not be super hippie about it. Well, it's, it's nice to see, I mean, somewhat hippie ish. It's if you think about it, that you and I get to hang out in this place in time where every other place in time, it doesn't exist. So yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean that in its own right for us to come together and, and get to hang twice. Cause technically we hung out a little bit of C2E2, but now just being on the show and hanging out, 
there are millions upon, you know, technically there are 300 and I don't know, 330 million other people that haven't met us, but we met each other. Yeah. And now we get to hang out and we have likenesses and cool stuff. So uh, that's a whole nother podcast that, and I I can't, I have to be drinking scotch and I have to be at least three deep before we start getting into that. So (laughs) I was like, I've only been taking CBD for like a week. So that's like a two week talk. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing wrong with CBD. Um, (laughs) So let me jump into chat real quick, just because of people that are, that are saying things to you. Um, And so Justin Richards coming up, excellent form on the hand gestures. Um, Justin Tordell saying, Hey, John, I love you. Um, Jeremy yeah. Darby saying, Hey, John, Josh Harris, love hearing John's experience. It's, it's crazy inspiring. And then there's a, actually a question for you, Uh-oh. not for me, because they see me every week and nobody gives a shit. Um, <laughs> at least not in this. I get t- asked tons of questions about marketing and how do I do this and strategy. Like that's what people come to me for. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to actual like coolness, Obviously, I, that's why I have guests on the show. Um, otherwise, I'd just be talking to the air and people would come in and ask me questions. They don't. Who is your <laughs> biggest like comic a... influence? Oh, boy. Um, so it's it's evolved. Um, so I think for my current, I would say Jeff Lemire. Um, I love that you hear him talk and he's this like super nice soft-spoken dude, but he has this just like gnarly darkness going on. Um, And he has like a little bit of humor in everything he does, but it's also dark and people speak like real people. It's not like, like I I have a problem where like sometimes I read like fantasy based comics and it it doesn't sound like anyone is talking like a human. It's like, I am going to go over here. And then they have really like obscure names and it's super hard to read. Like, it's it's good it does it does what it's supposed to do but for me like i love like conversational language like things rooted in reality with yeah. like frank a Miller. wrench thrown in the gears yeah right and like uh i'd say uh like rick remender's another great one mm-hmm. where like th- there's like and again like rick remender's another punk rock dude like uh he used to do album covers for like my favorite punk rock record label growing up so you know, again, there, there's all these connections, but like, and I'd also have to throw in Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction. Those are my two like big dogs. Um, but all of them have like a little bit of humor in everything they do. They have a lot of darkness in what they do, but there's always like this gray area morality thing going on. And they just do this nice dance through everything. Um, and it's not like I'm doing a comic A to B. Like you, you feel for every single person, and it doesn't matter if it's the art or whatever. Like Matt Fraction made the best Hawkeye run of all time, mm-hmm. and it still blows my mind. And uh, David, I don't know if it's Aja, I think. Um, I don't know how to pronounce yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, I think that's right. But he's a master. Like everything he does is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And you know, I've watched uh, like the Strip Panel Naked YouTube channel where they like break down every little panel like the the panel description could have been like he looks down and shoots someone with an arrow but then you see artwork that is telling two times the story of just the writing you know and like and that's why the collaboration of this is so rad like andrea sorrentino is another one where like it's an artist but like the stuff is mind blowing. Like, how is that from a human's brain? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like Sean Phillips is another example. Him and Ed Brubaker stuff. Like, I love Killer Be Killed. I love like like Bad Weekend. I have on my shelf, and it's like one of my favorite things I've read in the last ten years. You know, mm-hmm. um, like there's just this like unexplainable magic where I'll read these things and like for me like tom king's vision was what like slapped me in the face and like got me going i want to write comics like i didn't know they could be like this you know and then i loved this mr miracle run like there's there's all these people that are just doing super cool stuff um and it showed me like i think i have a voice and i didn't realize i did uh and i would look back at the stuff i wrote and it would you know sometimes it would be like reminiscent of other stuff like very early on i was doing the super tom king like narration that runs through the whole thing and like Uh i got to the point where i'm like i don't think that's me i think i'm just trying to replicate tom king uh but you know i i started taking a step back again and going oh 
like I can write weird, quirky stuff. I could have the dumb guy in the comic and then I could have the serious stuff and I could do all, you know, like, so I, I like being at kind of a, a collection of a bunch of people that I love. Yeah. That's kind of the way I roll as well. Like I, I grew up, I guess, I mean, I grew up just reading a ton of stuff, like all the classics, you know, um, great expectations and, you know, all the Jules Verne stuff and just, Animals. I had a ton of different stuff that I would read and comics finally came in probably in the nineties, um, with X-Men. And, uh, I remember the, there was a Batman comic called Gotham Knights, which brought me back into comics, which was mm-hmm. a four issue miniseries. And you know what, when I write, I, th- I write, I find myself emulating the same style as Stephen King, but when I think about it, I think about it as Frank Miller. Yeah. So, and I, and that's only like the dark stuff. The, my, uh, my comic that I have is a psychological thriller and the dark stuff is Frank Miller and the light stuff. I don't know who it is. Cause I'm just kind of like filling in and it's odd because I, I'm like, am I making my own, my own layout? Like, is this my style? And I don't know because obviously, and, or is it something that Frank Miller would eventually read and be like, dude, I get like this part I've seen before, you know, or this style I've seen before this kind of writing, but it's jacked up and I love it. Like that would, I would just, I'd fall over or if Stephen King ever read it or his son, because his son is obviously doing, um, uh, and Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And lock and key. And mm-hmm. like, for either of those guys to be like, dude, I read your stuff. I love it. I'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I don't know if you're like me where I have this, like, I don't, like this unrealistic want to make like five people think I am cool or give me a chance. And it's not even necessarily like, <laughs> the, and it's like not even necessarily like, other comic people or whatever like like in band world there would be like five people from our music scene where i'm like i wish they thought i was like cool for like one second yeah like you like i could sell out an arena tour and be like brandon doesn't take me seriously you know right like i'm just a guy and i'm like 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 that's how my brain works so like when it comes to my writing and stuff like i've completely removed that because Mm -hmm. i don't i don't want the people I love, like if they eventually got to it, cool. But like that, that's not my goal. Like my goal is to make people just feel something and escape the weird world we live in for a second, you know? Right. And Um, I'm, I'm saying I'm with you. That's mine. But I would just, I think what would blow my mind is if they did, it's not something that I would never pitch them be like, I would love for you to read this. It would just be more of happenstance that they're like, Hey, Oh, like we're at a show and they just happen. Somehow we run into each other at like an after party or something like that. And we're hanging out and we just end up meeting them. I say we, because obviously we're hanging out at this party together. Um, cause you're my we're draw. Um, and they're just <laughs> I'm like, the loud hey, guy I, going, Hey guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they just come up or we're at, we have a booth and they're like, Oh, I, I actually read this online. Can I buy it? And I would just be like, like my jaw would just drop. And, and he'd be I, like, I think that of course be, you can buy it. <laughs> yeah, ex, uh, of course you can. And I know how much money you make, so you can pay 500% higher than everybody else. <laughs> but I think it's it's that piece of the fact that, and that's what I love about comics, especially non-Marvel DC. And I'm trying to stick, stay away from indie comics because independent makes you think that you're just one person head to toe and everything. And really 25% of the industry is what I'm trying to grow. And then mm-hmm. we're, we're both in that. And that's not independent. It's exponentially innovative. And it's just, wow. it's different. I mean, that's deep, right? <laughs> um, so Dude. I think when I, I never go for the goal of having a lot of people read my book in the fact that I want them to love it. I'm going for the goal of, I just want you to read the book. And if you like it, that's, tell me you like it. If you think it sucks, tell me you think it sucks, mm-hmm. but let's have discussion about it. Like yeah, let's the- generate that engagement. I feel like the most important thing is like getting real criticism and understanding the importance of it. So like, like people don't, I don't know if they would guess this about me, but like I am in love with editors. Like every time I've written for like, uh, like I wrote for like vice, they had a music section called noisy. Mm -hmm. I wrote for them for about a year and these other places. 
And when people would rip me apart, I would have a second of like, are you serious? And then that would immediately go into, this is so much better now because I would have been content and lazy enough to not do anything about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So for example, like uh, my friend, Justin, who commented, uh, he has a comic called finger guns. That's super rad. And I sent him the inevitable script and he was like, Hey, can I, can I send you some notes just cause, and like, you know, and to be completely honest, like at at any time you see that you're like, why do I need note? And then you stop and go, please like that would be awesome because mm-hmm. the worst thing you can have as a creator is just a bunch of yes people yes and i know I mean, like or yeah correct that's what i meant not yes i meant don't correct. be yes <laughs> don't agree with me ever is what i'm saying <laughs> uh but like for me a big thing was like if i am sending stuff to someone and they're like i like i want to know what you think about it so many people are busy and they won't even give you the time of day to do that in the first place uh i've had so many people go hey i want to know what you think of this and i know they want me to just go it's cool but like sometimes if it's someone that i'm like really invested in i go what what advice do you want and like do you want me to be like brutally honest or do you want me to be like helping ease you into something or do you want me to just say i like it because those are all different layers of things you know Mm -hmm. Um, and like my dream is to work at a publisher or sorry, write for a publisher and have like an assigned editor that like works with me and like kicks my ass and like makes me do rad stuff. Like I adore that stuff. Uh, but it took me years to understand its importance because like I, like any other human has like that snap reflex where you're like, Oh, like, you think you're better than me? But then I'm like, people are paid to do that. Like, that's literally what they do. Or people that like are writers, like that have done cool stuff, you know, that's, that's part of that where I I don't want to reach out to the easy people that say, yes, I want to reach out to the people that go, Hey man, I could really help you out. And like, if you adjust these things and remember it, like, you know, you add that, like you level up in your brain. Like, it's like, I've been playing a ton of Metal Gear or not Metal Gear, uh, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, <laughs> like wonderful. And, War, uh, yeah, Warzone's fantastic. So I suck at Warzone, but I just do the multiplayer. Um, but I mean, hardcore uh, mode is where I usually live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to play, mm-hmm, that's fine. I, I always forget my weird Activision name or whatever. But uh, <laughs> the point being, with all of this, because this is what I do, I just walk and talk around myself. Um, I like try and level up as I go, you know, and Mm -hmm. there's times where you forget to like upgrade your artillery or your weapon or whatever. And like the same goes with being a creator. If you're not taking advice from other people and you're not actually utilizing that stuff, every time I listen to a podcast, every time I read a book, like Stephen King's on writing, one of the best things I've ever read in my life. And like, if I didn't take that stuff to heart and carry it with me, it would just be a thing I skimmed and didn't pay attention to. Right. But if someone gave me real advice, I keep that and I hold it and I like make it part of who I am. Yeah. And I think I asked for the same thing. I don't need people to blow smoke up my ass. Like I'm running a company. I don't have time to screw around. Like I work during the day. I try to spend time with my family at night before they go to bed and then I work. So in that two and a half hours that I work at night or one and a half, depending on what night it is, I don't have time to screw around. Mm -hmm. So don't blow smoke. Like, tell me if something (laughs) sucks. Like people that are testing our app right now, they're like, you know, oh, it's really good. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's a bullshit answer. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What's broken? Mm -hmm. I said, because that tells me you actually put something into it. And they come back and I have a group of people now that will destroy it. And I'm like, yes because you with, with the intention of making it better that's, that's the right. difference they're, they're not, not just being shitting all over shitty. it and that's what i tell yeah. them don't say it sucks that doesn't help either mm-hmm. why does it suck what would you like to see what are you comparing it to what those make what you're trying to put out and obviously i'm not outputting content right now i haven't written in like seven or eight years but as a company where you want tons of people to be able to come to it and read great content you don't want those things to suck so you know, and I think one of the biggest things that I get, I still pitch around my comic to for people that want to read it. I'm just like, if you want to read it, that's great. 
I'm like, dude, I haven't written in like seven, eight years. Like I still have <laughs> issues two through 20 outlined. Like 20, two is done, 20 is done, but the ones in between are all outlined. And I'm like, would you like, they, they're like, oh, I didn't know you wrote a comic too. I'm like, yeah, that's my screw up is this is now this company. I turned screw up into success. This is my lemonade right here. Um, and they're like, can I read it? This I'm is like, your Beyonce record. That's right. This, this is, this is, should have put a ring on it, bitch. So <laughs> the, when I give people my comic, I'm like, don't expect much because I'm, this is a one hit wonder. And it wasn't even a hit. Obviously it failed in Kickstarter. But, and I'm like, just tell me what you think. If you think it sucks, tell me. And they read it and they're like, Jeff, this is great. Like, I didn't know you were a writer. I'm like, I didn't know I was a writer either. But <laughs> I have asked that multiple times over the last seven years to people who I appreciate. And sometimes they'll say, I liked it. Do you, did you think about A, B, C, D? And I'm like, that's the stuff I want. Because that, if I ever get back into writing, is a great way. Or from a marketing perspective, that's what I can use. Or from a PR perspective, that's great. Or I can think about it next time. Or if one of these people, you know, we have 85 publishers, publishing partners with us now. They come to me and ask me what I think about their comic. I can look at it the same way that that person did. And I think that's awesome. So I feel like I'm leveling up every day. My wallet isn't. That's that's leveling down. But in general... Comics, baby. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, seriously. So... Well, listen, we, we've been talking for almost an hour now. Maybe we should get to your actual, like, your Kickstarter. You know, now that we did the intro for... <laughs> that was the longest intro pre-content, I think, that has ever been on the show, but it was fantastic. It's like, listen, Jeff, you are unfortunately likable, and this is hard for me. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, the quick thing. So, The Inevitables, it's a... The Inevitables. Art, the an art and music project that is on Kickstarter. Um, we are approaching $30,000. So we're almost at our second stretch goal already. And we still have about 20 days left to go. Um, and it is the coolest thing Oops. because I got to write a 22 page comic. Um, Liana Kangas is on art. Fabian Lee Lay, cause I said his name wrong on a podcast and I regretted it for the rest of my life, uh, is the layout artist. And then Cardinal Ray is doing lettering for us. And then on the music side, and this is where, you know, we've really padded it. Uh, so Vinny Fiorello from Less Than Jake, uh, he also launched Fuel by Ramen, which is a label I eventually went on, Paper and Plastic, which is also a label I worked with at some point too. Um, I've known him for 12 years or so, which is another weird punk rock tie-in. But he was also uh, in Less Than Jake, which was on my first punk rock compilation that I heard when I was nine years old. So... Like this, this is that kind of stuff I'm talking about where there's like, it's not just we're the music guys. Like all of us have these weird like tentacles where we're reaching into a bunch of other stuff. So Obi Fernandez is uh, in the band Westbound Train. He has a rad merch company called Meme Machine and him and Vinny are kind of the brains of this whole operation. So they were like, we have a concept. Let's write a record about it. They called Alex from Big D and the Kids Table. They all got together, started writing music. Um, Vinny hits me up on Christmas and goes, Hey, can I talk to you about something? And I thought he wanted me to like drum in less than Jake or something. Cause he was leaving and I was really confused and turns out he's like, I saw you post about, uh, wanting to do creative stuff. And I know you're into comics. Do you want to do a comic for an album we're writing? And I was like, that's so much cooler than <laughs> drumming. Like, like that's, Merry that's Christmas what I want to me. Do. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Okay, so I put something out in the world, and for once, you know, it helped me out. Um, so I've been working with Vinny and Obi and developing this thing for the longest time, uh, and it has been the coolest, weirdest, wildest project. Um, so as Vinny described, or like someone called him the Willy Wonka of punk rock, because it's never just like here's an album. It's like here's a lunchbox. Here's a you know, it's like the kiss equivalent of like merchandise and like right. wild extensions and stuff. <laughs> and then uh, when we launched this, someone also called it like ska gorillas. So it's the idea of like the gorillas having this cool visual representation of who they are. And we like, I, I got to help with the visual component. Devin Watson, who did uh, the album and comic artwork, um, he did like the covers and all the character designs. Like he set the tone for this whole thing. And then the rest of us are like, oh man, you just kicked all of our asses. Okay, let's all be really good now. Uh, 
and and that's what makes this special because like i think about the time uh arcade fire put out a record called the suburbs and i never cared about arcade fire and then uh I think it was spike jones did a video where it's like the strange suburb and like kids are playing and then out of nowhere there's like an army tank that goes by in the background and it's like this it ends up being this like really strange apocalyptic feeling thing but set in a suburb and it has all these conflicting emotions but the song going over that i click something in my brain i went oh i get what the band is doing now this makes sense so musically that's kind of what helped with that too where i was like I want to write a, uh, a comic about a bunch of like scrappy weirdos that come together and do this cool stuff. And without the soundtrack from Vinny, that wouldn't happen and vice versa. That's crazy. So I, along those same lines, sort of, I had met, um, and again, Inevitables, it's right there. The Kickstarter link, it's already in there. But now that literally triggered something that I had. I have not thought about this in years. So the fact that you have basically quasi merged music and comics together is amazing. The only person I've ever seen, and as we kind of talked about, I felt it was very Pink Floyd and Oz, you know, Wizard of Oz. You don't have to put them together, but when you do, it's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> also so, drugs. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, for years... I was friends with a guy named Jesse Blaze Snyder. And we just I just knew him as, you know, he had kind of done some music and he he was doing this really cool comic and putting some music to it. And I'm like, dude, this is badass. And we had been talking just kind of back and forth on Twitter, like kind of like you. You meet people and you're just kind of like, whatever. Um, we became uh, acquaintances, like maybe a little bit better acquaintances, but I can't call him up. I mean, I guess I can call him if I really want to, but... We're so not he's your tight. best friend. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. short of best friend. <laughs> just short. Just because that's that that role. You know, somebody has to die in order for that that role to take place. But um, so I'm kind of talking to him, and uh, he's like, "Yeah." He had mentioned his dad. I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." And then he, I I follow him on Twitter, and we were kind of going back and forth, and he was going to give me some of his content to put on the site. And uh, I saw it, and then I saw him retweet something from his dad. And his dad's D Snyder from Twisted Sister. I had a feeling it was going there. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, and so I, I called him and I'm like, hey, uh, I just want to let you know that I never knew who you were. I just thought your stuff was badass. He's like, I know that's why we're hanging out. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, I had no idea that was his dad, nor did I care. I mean, granted, I think it's cool now. Yeah. But. I liked him and I liked his style. And I think that he like you, you probably get a lot of fan base that knows who you are and wants to be a fan like that, which is great. But do you also feel like when people just recognize you again, like you sold due to cowbell or something like that, <laughs> but now do you think it's cool that people be like, Oh, I read your content on spin or I read it somewhere or I saw like, does that still, does that make you happy that people aren't gen going towards you because of who you are? They are liking you and seeking you out because of your content. They don't know you by your name. They just know the fact that you did this content. Have you had that happen yet? Um, Does that make sense? Or am, no, should yeah, I start it, it absolutely makes sense. So, uh, so I, I started a band called baggage and it was post my main band and it was called baggage for a reason because it was like, Everything I do will have the baggage of my previous life, right? Um, and it took me years. It was like a weird like therapy experiment to be like, how do I disassociate myself from something that made me feel weird at one point that I used to love? Um, and once I started doing comics, you know, I, I haven't had like, like I am totally milking the whole like the the reason people even know who I am is from music or because I make stupid jokes or because I write articles like. I heard one time someone was describing an article to me like, Hey, did you read that one thing about, uh, it was like, I don't, do you remember the drummer at the wrong gig? The guy that's like twirling the sticks and stuff that like viral video. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, so I interviewed him for noisy years ago and I remember this guy, we played a show in New York and someone was like, Oh, I like, I made a joke. And he's like, yeah, like I actually read an article about blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I wrote that. And he was like, that, that was you, you write. And I was like, 
someone read my thing and didn't know it was me. Like, that's awesome. You know, it is awesome. And, and like, I, I haven't had that in comics yet, but I know that's part of the deal. Like, I, like, I don't think anyone's going to just magically be like, dude, I was just scrolling through spin whiz. And I was like, what's someone with a weird nickname for their first name? I want to read that. It's about a jetpack guy, you know, mm-hmm. like, like I, I don't think I have this like organic pool yet. Uh, but who cares? Like, and if, if someone likes me for anything or cares about my stuff or supports me and doesn't read it sweet, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the dream would be for people to like read my stuff and know me as a writer or a comic writer specifically, but you know, I, I know it's going to be a while and like, especially when you're talking about like the music, uh, comic crossover thing, like I I'm still in that listed as like guy who was in bands, but I wrote a comic, you know? So I, I have to acknowledge it to an extent for people to even pay attention. Yeah. And that's like a necessary evil. But when it comes to, uh, like, 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 so for example, like I, I have been pitching to publishers. Like now I'm like, I am ready to go. Like I, I have some leverage. Like we have a Kickstarter that's almost at $30,000. Uh, I am super funny on Twitter and I have this massive following. That's not real. But, uh, like there's, <laughs> there's this thing where I'm like, I, I know a lot of people now. Cool. I'll start hitting them up. And the second you cross that like friend to business line, it's like, Vroom. Yeah, and then the car just slams on the brakes and it gets all weird. So my thing is like, uh, it's a global pandemic. Everything's super weird. I don't know what the hell is going on. Who cares? So like th- that's like the mentality I've developed is who cares plus. Where who cares? But if it works out, hell yeah. And like I'm working. Like I've been developing this awesome another music comic thing where I'm playing all the music on it. And I'm writing a full album for a comic, like a mini series. And I'm in the process of like starting to pitch that to people. And it's super nerve wracking and weird, but like, that's another way of like, I guess like massaging people into the stuff I do, you know, like I'm not, I'm not going like I've, I've written my opus. I've had one kickstarted comic and let's do a full ongoing series. Like I get it. You do, you know, you do the baby steps and you go into it. So like I have the ability to write an album and record it in my basement. Who cares? Like, that's what I do. Like I, I make a bunch of stuff happen at once because that's how I operate. So, you know, if any publishers are listening, I have a bunch of good stuff, but truth outside of my character, truth. Um, you know, th- it, all, it all comes back to like, I am very aware who I am. And for once in my life, I'm cool with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it well, took years to finally be cool with it. And Dom Cohn thinks you're hot. I love Dom. Also, good on you for pronouncing it properly. I'm pretty good with names. Um, not, I mean, not awesome, but decent. I mean, Dom, if you're still watching, I love you. See, there you go. Well, listen, man, we've been chatting for over an hour now. Um, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a solid 15 minutes, like you said. <laughs> I, I mean, it was great. And J- Justin actually says he knows Jesse also. And I, again, I'm I probably can't call him today, and he would remember who I am. Although he has an oddly brilliant mind. So he'd probably be like, dude, we just talked like two and a half years ago. I got you. Like, that's the kind of dude he is. He's just ungodly smart. Um, he Dom is still here. He says, Lo- loves you, BB. But oh, with yeah. a Y-E-W, like the, isn't that a, that's like a, a animal, right? A, or that's a Mew. Yeah. You're thinking of Mew from Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I mean, I have a seven year old son. We Pokemon is a thing. Yeah. Um, so listen, thank you for being here. Uh, is there anything else you want to mention before, before you go? I mean, sure. Um, so we have the inevitables on Kickstarter. You sure. Do. Um, Kick, yep. It's in there. And if you're watching YouTube down below, it's in the description. Go, go check it. That's right. Down there. I could finally do that. Now I know where to point. You sure um, can. So we are almost at our goal of $30,000. Uh, dollars on there, which is super rad. We just crossed $500 while we're doing this podcast. Um, and we are now unlocking a variant cover from Brian, Brian Ewing, who's super rad, does amazing like punk rock posters and stuff. Um, so we have about, I think it's 22 days left of the Kickstarter as well. So, you know, even if it's $5 for just a digital copy, or you just want to throw 
essentially like money in the tip jar, you know, like literally anything helps and it's super rad and we're trying to make the coolest, wildest stuff we can. Um, we're super proud of our team and, uh, outside of that, you know, on spin uh, monster bounty, I did that with Matt Emmons. Who's one of my favorite comic artists of all time. Uh, he's an amazing little monster man. And, uh, I did jetpack Zach with my friend, Miranda Ireland, who, did uh, a comic for Flint Hope with us. And this is like her second or third, you know, like venture into comics ever. Uh, and she has an amazing mind and is super creative and super rad. And I want to just yell at her to <laughs> put more awesome stuff into the world because she always does rad stuff. Uh, and then outside of that, all my social media is just John O'Diener. Um, and I am just going to be writing a billion comics and you know they call me Jono ip machine diener so all of those it. netflix folks watching hit me up oh yeah yeah and that that could that's a whole nother oh man that's that's a that we can talk about that offline sometime <laughs> the whole the whole world of netflix and licensing and good and keanu God. reeves um and then fernando silverio solis is coming in with some fire too oh yeah throwing he's fire a, your way some he's heat. a fiery gentleman some good some good heat though not i don't i don't recognize this as n negative heat this, not, this well if it was like a, if it was heat. a beef emoji it would be a problem <laughs> no this is this is straight up fire like just like yeah so um we i have started doing uh for the the thumbnail when i finally put this on youtube we usually have a a, a pause screen is there anything you would like to do we pause for five seconds and do something mm -hmm. so i can take it and make it the thumbnail. Is there anything you would like to do with me? Because it looks like we're on the same screen together, obviously. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like to do that we freeze for five seconds and show it, and then I'll make that our thumbnail? Are you a wrestling fan at all? Uh, old school or new school? Both. Like Hogan, Snuka, Ultimate Warrior? I'm more of that side than I am. Were you, were you ever an NWO fella? Um. So oh, yeah, with, with uh, Hogan and uh, let me see, it was Hogan and then <laughs> Razor and not, I mean, I knew of them. I right, missed, so, th I missed that gap. So this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to bring old wrestling fans and new wrestling fans. Like oh, wow. we're going to have the bullet club and we're going to have NWO together. So this is called the two sweet, too sweet. So you got the two fingers and then yeah, I have my long alien fingers, but don't worry about it. It's like a wolf. Yes. And we're gonna two sweet each other. You gotta go to the other side. There. Oh shoot! Can you still do it? Yeah. Wait a minute. I gotta go to the other side. All right. You need to. Wait. I'm going to the. Or no. I'm watching the delayed thing while I'm doing this. Yeah. Also. <laughs> so Justin you... just did uh, <laughs> the meat. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Exactly, Nikki. Wait. Exactly. Is my hand? So my. Can you see it on our my screen on the on? See, I'm like. You need to put. You need it to come up, over, to back up yep, a little bit, more. back up a little, right there. I'll, yeah, right there. And All then, right. do we smile at each other, or do we like, what do we do? Let's do a cool look in the camera face because we're so confident. All right, you ready? Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. count off. We'll do, we'll do a five, a, a silent five, starting now. That was wonderful. That Hell was yeah. wonderful. That was great. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna use that. Um, so, uh, and Nikki Cone coming in through with Ricky Dragon Steamboat. I mean, so obviously somebody knows where I was and what I was watching because, uh, Coco Beware, same thing. Brutus the Barber, oh, yeah. Kay, Jake Snake Roberts. I can. Ravishing I can Rick Rude. Mm-hmm. Ravishing Rick Rude. That's right. So thank you, dude, for being here. I would love to have you back on the show just so we can shoot the shit. I mean. And we could even do like talking outside of the podcast. Like there is a potential that you and I could just talk. Yeah, and I could give you my like my Venmo and stuff before we talk, so it'd be like no big deal. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I would just you know put a coin in, and then we can talk for a little bit longer. It's like calling you collect, but it's just you're collecting. Yeah, exactly. That's like as a freelancer, you know, I I need money before I do anything. So that's right. I, I completely it. understand. <laughs> that, that's fine. I I get it. Uh, trust me, I understand. So thank you for being here, man. As always, uh, meeting at C two E two was awesome. And I'm super happy to have you on the site. Everybody, uh, make sure you're going to hang out with uh, Jono and getting all his stuff. Remember, if 
you want. And on SpinWiz, you can read his stuff, but if you like it, buy it. And if you can't buy it because you're out of a little bit of cash because COVID's crazy, then just share it. Tell your friends about it so he gets a bigger user base. It's really that simple. Um, so thank you, everybody, for trim in chat being here. What a great bunch of people coming in that actually know you that don't know me, but now I feel like we're friends. Not me and you. You, you, you and I were already kind of friends, but now everybody in the chat I'm friends with now. Yeah, so now they're your acquaintances, but I'm your best friend. Yeah, yes. Via the transitive property. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody stepped up one full level so it was a bit it was a big power up really is what it was um you, you know i was little mario and now i'm like big mario but maybe even mario with the tanuki suit is that that's kind of what i'm feeling yeah and i'm just a waluigi all the time <laughs> <laughs> so listen man hang on the line for me one minute let me sign off with everybody and i'll be right back to you all right later Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. That is the end of the Spin Wiz Comic Show tonight. Uh, again, if you were live, awesome. Thanks for being here on Facebook. Uh, if you were on YouTube's, still awesome. That doesn't hurt anything. Like it, share it, leave some comments below. Check out the links. Back to Kickstarter. Go check it out. If you want to read some of his stuff first, go to Spin Wiz. Links below. Check it out. Everybody that came in and actually watched, um, Thank you so much. It's great being here. We do this every Wednesday and Sunday night, except for next Wednesday and Sunday night because I'm on vacation. So every other Wednesday and Sunday night, outside of the one that I just talked about, um, be back because we're we're always introducing and talk, getting to know new people and great people. So thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful night, wonderful night. Have a marvelous weekend, and I will see you in about a week. Um, go check out the Kickstarter. Links in the chat. Talk to you soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Later.